Hey y'all, it still feels so weird to go and make a YouTube video. I don't know, like the last time I filmed a YouTube video was on my birthday <laughs> and it's been more than 10 days since my birthday. I don't know, I feel like the pandemic has made me more introverted or something. I just get nervous before I like turn the camera on, which is weird. But it also might just be because today I'm going to read with you, read for you, read with you. And I guess as I age, I'm getting like less and less brave or maybe I'm just like, I was never brave in the first place. <laughs> I've always been kind of a nervous person actually. Um, I don't know. I usually get the result of extroverted on my 16personalities.com. <laughs> but I just feel very shy today or yesterday I had to really psych myself up in order to prepare mentally for filming this video today. I don't know, yeah. Anyway, I am wearing the Spanish real gray O-Lens contact lenses right now because I actually wore them um, like two weeks ago for an audition and because they're monthlies, they do expire in a month from the first time you wear them, I think. So, I don't know, I'm like a contacts noob, so if I'm wrong about any of these things, correct me in the comments. But yeah, I think that I should try to get the most out of the money I paid and just try to wear them as often as I can before they expire in a month from whenever I first wore them. So that's why I'm wearing them today and like, cause there's no events to wear them to cause I just stay home all the time cause of the pandemic. So like the only opportunities I really have to wear them is for like when I'm taking photos for Instagram or when I'm taking photos for a lookbook or making a YouTube video. So here they are in. <laughs> All that aside, today I'm gonna be reading to you chapter two of Prestigious, which is a novel, the first novel in a book series that I wrote called The Alphas. It's like an unfinished book series. And I started writing it when I was 12. So <laughs> if the prose is not sophisticated enough for you, it's from a 12 year old at least the first drafts were, so keep that in mind. And yeah, I get nervous to share my writing, so yeah, be nice, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you can be mean if you want, I don't care, it's fine. But I like it, so I feel like if I like The Alphas so much, then there's gotta be someone else out there that also really likes The Alphas. And my inspiration for the alphas was kind of like the books that i was reading at the time so at the time when i was 12 i was an avid fan of gossip girl the um first iteration of gossip girl and i was an avid fan of the pretty little liars books by sarah shepherd and also the books private the private novel series by kate bryan so those are the inspirations for the alphas and i still really love those like kind of like private school rich people problems type dramas now so that's the kind of genre that this is in it's like a murder mystery type of elite school high school setting and it's been so many years since i read chapter two and i know i have to kind of speed this up because this intro is way too long <laughs> but i kind of talk slowly i guess so I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah, it's been like probably like six years since I read this chapter or more than six years. So <laughs> not sure what it's going to entail because I don't remember what happens in this chapter. All I know is that in the last video I made of this, I read chapter one to you. By the way, you there's a playlist I made on my YouTube channel, so you would have to read read or watch the videos that are prologue part one, prologue part two, and then chapter one to be caught up for this video. Because this video is chapter two, which comes after the prologue, parts one and two, and chapter one, math. So with that all said, let's get into chapter two. I'm nervous and excited to read this for the first time in a long time with you guys. So let me just Located on my computer. So I saved all my novels that are completed, all the completed novels, into PDF 
uh, formats, format PDFs. So this is the cover art that I created and I just used fashion models. This is Jacob Yan and this is, um, darn it, I keep forgetting her name, but I kind of photoshopped her eyes to make them more of like an emerald green. Oh wait, her name is Darla Baker, Darla Baker, yes. And I photoshopped her eyes to make them more emerald green because the character, all the characters in these books have very brilliant eye colors, very vibrant eye colors, which is probably not realistic, but that's how I wanted it. So, cause it's fun that way. Okay, let's see. So it says story officially started in 2008 or I actually, this is not correct. I think it was started before 2008, but um, yeah, I made so many first drafts of this like way before 2008. So this is not <laughs> right. But anyway, um, yeah, so it says at the beginning, all that glitters is not gold. I love having little quotes in the beginning. And this is a very cliche quote, I know, but it's a good one. And that's kind of the theme of this whole series is that um, everything gold is not what it seems kind of thing. I also really love um, Pony Boy and The Outsiders. So like gold as a theme is really cool. And I love that theme. Okay, so where should we go? I don't know where chapter... Okay, let me just search for it. Chapter 2. Okay, it's just a meeting. Here we go. <laughs> chapter two it's just a meeting 7 p.m the gallant manor and also recently i started watching like martin mystery again and totally spies and i was a huge fan of that as a kid too and i realized that like the whole like 6 45 a.m you know blah 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 academy or whatever like the time and the location and everything they would all show up on the screen in totally spies and in martin mystery so that's kind of like what I was doing here, I think. I mean, it might have been taken from Martin Mystery and Totally Spies as like giving the place and the time and everything. I love doing that. Even in my diaries, I always put like the time and the place and the where I'm writing it. And like, I just love having that at the beginning of any scene that you're setting up. A joyous melody rang through the glistening grand hall. They knew at once it was Mrs. Gallant's hand-picked tune for the household's front doorbell classical and vibrant, just like the respected woman herself. The girls all squealed and screamed, running for the door. They'd been anticipating Era's arrival for an hour now, giggling and whispering about what was to come. Stop, Teal yelled, rolling her eyes. Everyone came to a halt, along with voicing some groans. She glared at each one of the girls who'd reacted to the doorbell loudly. Then Teal strolled up superiorly to open the door for the girl. Wait, no, let her think she got stood up. Levada Craig snickered. Snow Elmer raised an eyebrow at Levada, expressing something like, seriously? She crossed her arms motherly, giving Levada a scolding look, wondering how childish Levada could possibly get. Teal usually felt the same way about Levada, that she was an obnoxious party girl. But Teal just laughed, causing Snow to glower at her. Just kidding, Teal smiled, sweetness just oozing out of her. Snow seemed fed up enough because she frowned and walked off, sitting down on the couch in the next door living room, picking up her mug of coffee and sipping it. The doorbell rang again. Teal just gave a little shrug, indifference striking her facial features. Mikkel Thurlow huffed a sigh and started tapping her Jeffrey Campbell flats against the polished floors. Oh yeah, Mikkel Thurlow is the character that's being portrayed on the cover, along with Louis Overbury. Those are who those fashion models represent on the cover. Mikkel Thurlow huffed a sigh and started tapping her Jeffrey Campbell flats against the polished floors. That girl was never good with patience. Can we just get on with it? I hate standing, she complained. Fine, fine, Teal grumbled. Teal turned the doorknob and let the little twerp in. The black-haired girl smiled at her innocently. Teal, she said. Her Pacific blue eyes shone as she stepped into Teal's house. What is Pacific blue? I don't know. Was I trying to say like Pacific Ocean blue? <laughs> okay. Teal was about to make a rude remark about how she didn't say Era could come in, but she thought better of it. They weren't supposed to act bitchy around her until they knew she was alpha material. 
Era apparently hadn't noticed the crowd of girls watching her. She didn't seem to notice anyone but Teal in the room when she said, um, Teal, I kind of told my mom that I'd call her as soon as I got here. Uh, and well, your parents are home, right? <laughs> All the girls, including Teal, burst out laughing. Era really had no clue how pathetic she just sounded. Teal so wished she could smart mouth Era just then. She was so cute. Cute, innocent, and clueless. Exactly what the alphas needed a dose of. All the stress was overwhelming. As much as Teal tried to push Penelope Flynn's disappearance and Leanna's death and Shirley's expulsion under her, she still couldn't. Although, she must admit, she thought she did a pretty good job of making herself appear permanently nonchalant. She just attempted to man maintain positivity. After all, she was the Alpha Girls leader now. It had all turned out for the better in Teal's favor. The look... Why is it... Why did I spell favor the American way? I think it's supposed to have a U in it to be Canadian. The look on Era's face helped them laugh a lot harder, though. She looked so frightened as she realized there were six of them and, well, one of her. Teal was pretty sure Era had no idea why they were all laughing hysterically. And yeah, it wasn't that funny, but they all just felt like laughing anyway, both as a way to make Era feel uncomfortable and also to release any tenseness in themselves. It was unfortunate for her. Era shifted her weight onto her other foot awkwardly and cleared her throat. Teal sighed. Sorry about that, Era. I can't explain it. And yes, my parents are home. Okay, great. And when will I be getting home? Era asked, smiling again, trying hard to make herself at ease in front of all those intimidating faces. At home, she'd definitely read up on the alphas and her suspicions had been correct. Teal Gallant was indeed the alpha girl's leader. She'd also checked the full list of all the current alphas. Justin was an alpha too. And even though she would never confess, she'd Googled <laughs> Justin Barrick and what do you know? He was famous, a junior tennis player. No wonder he hadn't seemed the most comfortable in the school environment. He'd probably been tutored for most of his teenage life. Depends if you want to leave or not, Teal smirked. Era nodded absentmindedly and lifted her cell phone up to her ear, telling her mom everything and uncomfortably eyeing the other girls every once in a while. Teal looked at the other girls, silently asking if they wanted her in the group. They all nodded knowingly, except for Levada, who was holding back laughs. Teal pursed her lips, bulging her eyes out at Levada. Shut up! She knew completely that inviting all the alpha girls wasn't usually done. The choosing of an alpha girl was, de was determined mainly by the high alphas, which were currently Teal, Snow, and Mikkel. When Snow Elmer had gotten the recommendation slash permission from the school board to be made a high alpha, Callie Rushton had thrown a fit. Callie was hoping they'd make her a high alpha. She'd been an alpha from the start, after all, and it just didn't make sense to her. Oh well, too bad so sad was the way Teal looked at it. She was perfectly content to have Snow as a high alpha. Snow had proved responsible and had assisted Teal in a lot, which Teal was thankful for. But she had to invite all the girls to the meeting, as much as she hated having Levada around sometimes. She was too much of a one-person party, 24-7. Yet, they were all needed for the first test she had in mind for Era to endure. Era put her phone back into her case and she was about to put it back into her scrawny little Era postal bag when Teal snatched the phone out of her hands. Hey, she cried, confused. Teal slipped her phone into one of her bags. It was the Juicy Couture Classic Black Shoulder Bag. Teal's dad had bought it for her when she was in eighth grade, but she'd never got around to using it. Here, for you. Teal smiled sweetly as she handed her the Juicy Shoulder Bag. Era's mouth hung open. Teal, this costs like $200. Why are you giving it to me? Teal scoffed. Because I can, she replied. Era's behavior proved she was on scholarship. No way did she come from a family that could actually afford schooling at Gateway. That didn't matter to Teal, even though a lot of her fellow alpha girls had asked her about this matter. Teal judged people by their character. Era took a deep breath. She stroked the bag as if it were a kitten, and she accidentally dropped her Aeropostale bag onto the ground, but showed no reaction. Bree, Teal said. Bree Atkins was the newest member of her new and improved Alpha Girls, and so she was statistically the maid. 
I don't know if statistically is the right word to use there, but basically I meant to say that like her status was like the maid. <laughs> Until Teal announced that she was free. Bree stepped forward slightly sulkily and picked up the air postal bag off the ground and gave it to Teal. Teal then proceeded to dump all of its contents onto the floor, not caring if there was something breakable inside. But then she felt Mikkel's cold glare on her. Beware that whenever Mikkel sets her eyes on someone, said someone, will feel it. Teal looked at her. Oops, she mouthed. She had accidentally let her mean, well, not exactly mean, more like inconsiderate side come through in front of Era while she was supposed to be an angel at this point of the game. Teal went on with it though. Then she put the rest of Era's stuff into her new juicy bag. Thanks so much, Teal, Era said, clutching her new bag. Teal smiled genuinely. She still couldn't believe she was now the leader. Teal couldn't even remember how it felt not being the leader anymore. Lavada Craig and Brie Atkins were the newest additions to the Alpha Girls. Leanna was long gone and Shirley had moved away for unknown reasons. She got expelled actually, but no one knew why. She must have done something really bad and it would probably be on her record. Teal didn't care though. It was good Shirley was out of her life. It makes what happened the night Leanna died less memorable. Levada Craig's parents were both talent agents, and Teal had met up with Levada on a beach in California during the summer, and Teal insisted on her coming to live with her family. Teal also forced Levada to apply for Gateway Academy. Only Levada and Teal knew that Levada Craig had also donated tons of money to Gateway to slightly better her chances. Not that the school board would man up to being wavered by money. Anyway, her parents were so busy, Levada was thinking about moving out. She'd claimed that it wouldn't make a difference to them anyway. Levada was an old friend, too. She slept in the room next to Teal's, which was a guest bedroom that had a bathroom in it and a mini kitchen as well. Levada was actually a pretty good cook. And then there was Bree, who was the richest of them all. Her mom's side had a huge family fortune. Her house in Brooks Road was only her winter home. She decided to move into the house permanently after she met Teal, at least until university. Bree's closet was as big as a living room, considering there's a mini runway in there thanks to her father. The Alpha Girls had made so many trips to her closet during the summer that it practically became their second home, or closet, rather. Okay, gals, to the sofas, Teal said quickly, moving along into the living room. She sat down onto a white leather sofa. So why did you ask me to come here anyway? Air asked hesitantly, still gazing around at Teal's house every so often, in awe. Well, we wanted to get to know you better, Teal said. At the same time, Bree said, to see if you're good enough to hang out with us. <laughs> Teal smiled briefly, pretending she didn't hear what Bree said. She wasn't supposed to say that particular detail. Teal sighed and stood up. I'm sure you've noticed that all of us have, well, your dad's pinky rings, right? Teal asked twisting her rein around her pinky. Era nodded. Era, have you ever heard of the Alphas? Teal questioned. Yeah, Era laughed nervously. Actually, I kind of searched online for information about you guys. I found the Gateway Academy website and got to the Alphas section. I just read the about part, and my dad also mentioned that Alphas almost always get into Ivy League schools or something. Of course, that's what the adults cared about the most. Everyone in North America wanted their child to get into a good university. The Ivy League, that was beyond their dreams. Every adult in Brooks Road knew that alphas were basically kids who went to Gateway and blew the teachers away with their ability and were therefore rewarded with guaranteed success and great privileges as long as they stayed good students. Having a kid who became an alpha offered really good bragging rights. And Era Joel's Teal stood up again. We are considering you for an alpha. Just don't get your hopes up because you have to pass some tests first. Era's eyes widened and she gasped. I'm so up for it, she stated. Brie and Callie laughed at her eagerness. I will introduce you to my fellow alpha girls. As you might know already, I'm the alpha girls leader, Teal said, and then began with gesturing to Mikkel Thurlow. Mikkel Thurlow, Mikkel said, introducing herself. Every other girl did the same, stating their name. Era smiled at each one of them. Brie? Teal glanced at the girl. Suddenly, everything was dark. 
This is your first test, Teal told Era, and she smiled challengingly in the dark, even though she couldn't see her. Tell me the names of all the girls, and when you say their name, tell me their hair and eye color, Teal announced. There was silence as Era thought. She'd seen the professional pictures and headshots of the current alphas on the Gateway website, so she thought she was pretty prepared for this one. She took a breath and then answered. Teal Gallant, Era chanted. Honey blonde hair and uh, brownish eyes, like bronze or gold. Teal heard Era take in a deep breath, then start again. Mikkel Thurlow has dark brown hair and green eyes. Callie Rushton has dirty blonde hair and green eyes, or you might look at it as brown or brownie green. And the uh, strawberry blonde one, um, Lavada Craig with the dark blue green eyes, and Brie Brie at Atwood, no Atkins, I mean, and um, light brown hair and blue eyes, um, sky blue, and the platinum blonde one, Snow, Snow Elmer, she's got pale blue eyes. The lights flickered back on. Teal scowled. The girl had passed with flying colors. She had expected more of a struggle. Was her test really that easy? <laughs> no, it couldn't have been. It seemed that Era Jules was just very observing, which Teal liked. Well, maybe I meant to say observant, which Teal liked. Era could really catch the details when she wanted to, even though she was often oblivious. <laughs> this was a test Teal had made to make sure that her alpha girls all paid attention attention wait wait oh i lost my place whoopsie whoopsie attention all paid attention to looks and to make sure that they all listened carefully era apparently paid very close attention to detail or maybe she could see in the dark unlikely congrats you have passed the first test which means you're officially an aip teal said to era alpha in the process callie muttered eyeing Era suspiciously. It was like Callie had something against the girl already, and Teal had almost no clue why, unless, well, Teal had seen Callie staring at Justin during that morning's math class. She had been very concentrated and didn't look pleased at all, seeing that Justin kept glancing back at Era. Now Teal knew that for sure Callie Rushton had been pining for Justin Barrick ever since she'd had met him at the party Leanna Escott had died at. Whether she had gotten anywhere with him over the summer, Teal didn't know. What she did know was that Justin seemed to be love-stricken over Era, whom he'd obviously only just met that morning as well. Teal almost felt bad for Callie. Era was silent. She looked like she was trying to recover from the pressure. She smiled shyly at Teal. Teal didn't smile back. Text log. Hey Era, I hope you gave me the right number, haha. <laughs> JB. Era? JB. Okay, it's really funny because I named these characters before Justin Bieber was famous, and it's funny because he has the same initials as Justin Bieber. That is a coincidence. Text log. Hey, um, what are the girls doing tonight, JB? T's doing some meet and greet with that new girl, Era or Alara. I think she's considering her for an alpha, IP. Well, that explains it. Thanks, man. JB. I don't get it. IP. <laughs> okay, I think I should read chapter three as well. So this is going to be two chapters, I guess. I just think I should go into chapter three too. The rules. And at the top, there's A78, which is the logo for the alphas because they started in 1978. 8.01 p.m. The Gallant Manor. They strutted confidently past the portraits displayed on the Gallant's shimmering pale yellow walls. There was a professionally taken framed shot of Teal Gallant smiling encouragingly side by side with her brother Camden Gallant who seemed to radiate a certain charm. It looked to be taken at least a year ago for Teal looked the exact same if not slightly less knowledgeable. There is another picture of the whole family and the version of Teal in that frame looked younger, perhaps 13. 
She still had her lawn butterscotch hair, but it was neatly held back by a sparkling headband. Her light brown eyes glistened in the picture, full of lights. It warmed Era Joel's insides to see all the family pictures. There's one of Teal's eight-year-old self laughing with pure glee. Follow me. It was unnecessary of Teal to say because she already knew they were, not just because of the sound of their heels against the stairs, but because they always did. Why wouldn't they? She was the Alpha Girl's leader now, like she was destined to be. The six girls trailed behind her as she opened up the door to her room. Everything in her room was either sky blue, mint green, or white, besides the floor, which was wood, brown of course. All this gave her room a refreshing feeling that she liked. It had a peppermint smell to it from the air freshener. It used to be lavender, but Teal had decided to change it permanently. She had gotten tired of that same old lavender smell anyway. Plus, she wanted to start fresh for some reason due to Lana Eastcott being gone. Teal pointed to a chart Snow Elmer had set up on the sky blue wall. That's the rule, she stated, surveying Era's expression. Mikkel recited the rule. Alpha rule number one maintain an A average in school. The lowest report card mark you can get is 1B for staying in Alpha, Snow explained. This was Snow's favorite rule. For the guys too? Era asked. Yes, duh. This is the main rule for all, for all Alphas, or else how would you get into an Ivy League university? Levada pointed out, flipping her blonde hair over her bony shoulders. Era considered this. It doesn't even matter how much money your parents donate, believe me. People have tried that method before, Teal said, practically reading Era's obvious thoughts. You, get me some water, please, Teal said, looking at Brie, and take your precious time. Then she looked at Levada. And you, go do me a favor and redo your makeup. There's nothing wrong with my makeup, Levada growled at her. Having a sister as a makeup artist, Levada was pretty sure she knew exactly what she was doing makeup-wise. She knew how to make herself look flawless, all right. She even went on runway modeling gigs before. She was with an agency. Her mother had gotten her to sign with them because she had connections, of course. She spent more than enough time watching her reflection in the mirror while makeup was being done by professionals. I, no, just, do it, Teal said with clenched teeth. Levada sucked in some air and blew it out at her. Teal just rolled her eyes as her hair moved a bit from the gust. Goodbye, Elle, Teal told her. Levada made a face, but left the room. Teal listened carefully to the two of their footsteps until they faded away. Then she turned back to the rest. Okay, now Callie, can you step out? Teal said as gently as possible. She knew Callie threw fits and she couldn't allow one in front of Era right now. Callie apparently knew it was coming anyway, so she tried not to sigh as she removed herself from Teal's bedroom, muttering unheard words. Era, come here, Teal said, smiling. Era seemed to have sensed that something dangerous was about to happen. Just by the way Teal was smiling, it was cruel looking, and Era could see it. She wasn't that stupid. What are you going to do? Era's mouth turned down at the corners. Please, don't, Era whispered. Snow. Do the honors. Snow stepped up to Era and tied Era's arms together easily. Era didn't budge. She just breathed in and out in a steady pace. Then Teal went up to Era and pushed her up to her window. Jump, she ordered, her face solemn. Jump out the window, Era whispered, and her blue eyes widened as she stared at Teal. Her face held no expression. She nodded. Will I break anything? Era asked, and her lips cracked into a smile. Teal thought maybe Era thought the whole thing was funny, or maybe that Era didn't believe anything bad could happen to her. You like breaking yourself? Mikkel cried, not believing what she had heard. No, Era said slowly. Uh, I, uh, you guys won't let me, right? Teal chuckled. It all depends, she smiled in a sinister way. Era nodded and took a deep breath. She looked down into the dark. Ready? Snow nudged Era. Now? Era said uncertainly. Mikkel nodded at her. Now? Era took another deep breath. Oh, okay. Era stepped onto the bench outside. Era stepped onto the bench beside Teal's window, and within a second, she was gone. She had leaped swiftly out. Teal heard a shriek, and they all started laughing when they saw Era bounce right back up. 
They saw her through the window. She fell, then she bounced up into view again. A trampoline? <laughs> Eric gasped, laughing with the rest of the girls. That's right, Aragels. You have just passed the bravery test. Text log. Are you sure about this A thing, T? K R. I'm pretty sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, but if I'm not, then I guess we'll find out anyway. Care to explain why you ask? T G. Uh, not really. Dot, dot, dot. K R. Okay, so that's chapter two and chapter three. Yeah, I enjoyed reading that. I mean, it wasn't as bad as I thought, <laughs> I thought it was going to be. <laughs> no, I liked it. I liked it. So, Era's on her way to becoming an alpha. Yay. Um, yeah. So, that's the end for this video. Uh, I feel like there was something else I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, yeah. I figured out, like, I was doing something wrong with my shampoo before, and I was making my hair really greasy because I was using too much conditioner and too much shampoo, probably, too. So, all you have to do is do, like, a little dollop of shampoo. Like, a little coin-shaped dollop size of shampoo. And then just rub it into your forehead or scalp here. And then... And then the conditioner, you can also just do a little bit of conditioner. And I feel like my hair is floofy now. And yeah, I discovered that I was basically shampooing and conditioning my hair on. And also I put like a lot of oil. Like that's why in the last video, my hair was a little greasy. I put oil into like the tops of my head, like Moroccan oil. And you're not supposed to put hair oil on the top, only on the tips. I learned these things recently so i'm just telling you i know that's really off topic but i i'm a weirdo anyway i guess i should end this video now and i hope you enjoyed chapter two and chapter three of prestigious we are on page 73 out of 559 pages or something so yeah coolio or page 83 out of 559 in the document it says up there um, I don't know if I will continue reading the entire novel. Let me know if you want me to. Um, I mean, I could. <laughs> I could. I very much could. It just requires me to drink some water and like, yeah, hopefully my voice won't die as I'm reading so much. Um, yeah. In the beginning when I thought about this idea of like reading my books to you on YouTube I thought it would be a lot more feasible than it actually seems to be because it does actually take a long time to read and the throat does get a little scratchy near the end when you're reading so much but next time I should just bring a cup of water or something anyway so if you want me to continue reading these let me know and yeah, thanks for watching this video and reading with me. Bye, Jujubes. Oh, by the way, this little cloud and this, these are clip-ons. I didn't uh, pierce my ears or anything. Okay. Bye, Jujubes.